Hey guys, Greg Jones for Engine Builder here. We are at 2021 PRI show, and I'm joined by Mike Copeland of Arrington Performance. You guys might recognize Mike from uh, the coverage we did on his Rampage, his Dodge Rampage earlier this summer. And we got another awesome Hemi right behind us to talk a little bit about, and it's gonna be our engine of the week. Engine Builder's Engine of the Week is sponsored by Pengrain. Precision, performance, Pengrain. Always the original green oil. L-Ring DOS Original. Leading technology, leading service. And SCAT Crankshafts. Everything for your LS engine. Mike, thanks for uh, giving us a little bit of time today here. I know it's a busy show. It's you know, awesome to be back here in Indy again, and uh, love to hear a little bit about the 426 Hemi we got here. Sure, well, I love PRI. It yeah. is so good to be home again, right? So this is where we all get to hang out, all racers, the place is full of gearheads. Doesn't get any better. So we brought out one of our latest engines. This is a Gen 3 Hemi, 426 cubic inch. Uh, we build them obviously all at Arrington. It has uh, uh, white skull pistons in it, all specifically designed all designed for this 1500 horsepower range target, right? Production block, but all clearances and- Yeah, yeah, talk a little bit about the machining that you guys might've done to it. So, yeah. you know, all, as any high-end engine builder, right? You're all gonna use engine surface plates as you do it. You're gonna four score, four square corner to get all of the, the pistons at the exact same height. Uh, you, you know, we go through and, te and set the cam journal and then measure that to the crank. Then we set the crank journal and everything's set off, off of that. So no variance in block, it, it, all of that's machined out, right? Dodge does a pretty good job, but you know their, their numbers may be a little different than ours, right? Cylinders are all bored and honed, all with the block plates, all everything done there. We eliminate the uh, variable vamp, valve timing with most of these. We also eliminate MDS. We don't run any of that in the engine. So, I talk a little bit about some of the benefits of doing that for. Uh... Well, so, for a street engine, variable cam timing is, a, is actually an advantage. You can rotate the camshaft, and, and then we have to limit them when we use like aftermarket cams with more lift and duration. But running that lets you get, you can change the cam location and get more torque, lower RPM. And then as you get into higher RPM, we rotate the camshaft and get the performance back at the top. So, so anyway, we have to eliminate that with big camshafts and obviously with a 1500 horse target, this is a pretty serious piece. So we target that and we, we eliminate that because of the cam size. It's still a hydraulic roller, okay? It's an Arrington exclusive cam. It's a new one we developed for this type of program. It has, uh, I guess the all forged bottom end, the cam, we use uh, uh, Hellcat lifters in most of the stuff like this we build. We find them to be really good. Uh, there's a couple aftermarkets that are just as good, but supply trying to get stuff now. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. You kind of have to <laughs> yeah. find work workarounds. Yeah, absolutely. These are Titec bear heads, so it's the biggest Titec head they make. It flows the most of anything. Has the larger valves. Has all of that. Uh, we run a Holly intake on it, the Sniper. We've modified this some. Um, it's got a LS. 103 millimeter throttle body. It's got 105, and, and so it's got all of the, everything we've modified the port some in it. Uh, it was an okay starting point for what we were doing, right? Hemi intakes are a little bit limited, so you have to kind of get what you can get. The real, the step up in this, the twins. Yeah, right? twin superchargers, right? Torque Storms, so uh, Torque Storm only builds one size of supercharger. They're all billet. Hemis move a lot of air, so you want to make a lot of a lot of power with them. You got to run two of them, right? You can make nine, ten pounds on a Hemi, smaller Hemi, maybe get to twelve with a single. But here our target's twenty. As I told them when I had everything done, I said take your maximum RPM and add ten percent to start and machine all the pulleys, and then we'll adjust from there. So, <clears throat> hence the big the big lower. The, the smaller pulleys on the supercharger. And Mike, you and I were talking a little bit earlier, you know, Torque Storm has really come on as of late in the last couple of years and gotten a lot more popular. And 
you know, we were discussing because of, you know, what it delivers for the price point, right? Right. So Torchstorm doesn't build complete supercharger kits. Torchstorm's expertise, they build the superchargers, which are all CNC billet. They build all the bracketry and the accessory drives. Again, all CNC billet. They make all their own pulleys. They do all of that. It's up to you to supply that calibration, you to supply the intercooler, whoever that is. So their price point is really good. I mean, you buy a single and they're, they're like $3,000. You can do the twin setup. This whole setup is, is not even $7,000, right? So you do that and you can make big boost. They're, they see the size of the brackets, everything CNC, right? It's strong. Their superchargers have a lifetime warranty even when you spin them up like I do. <laughs> yeah, how much, how much boost are you running on a setup like this? Uh, this one will make 20 pounds. Okay. Yep. So we'll make 14 to 1500 horsepower historically with this. I expect this to do that and more. One of the advantages too is that they're lower rotational mass and lower rotational friction. People don't think about weight of the supercharger components. You have to accelerate it and then you have to slow it down. A lot of times when we're running on engine dynos, when you lift off of it, you can actually hear the supercharger weight squeal the belt as you lift off of the throttle. Yeah. So that's a real good indicator that you got some, you got a lot of components moving and they weigh pretty good amount. So we don't get that with these, right? Get lots of belt wrap, which is critical to superchargers. You know, the accessory drive comes with it, alternators all there. We, we could have power steering. This is actually going in my 69 Dart that we're building little street car and uh, so we didn't we're not running power steering but well at 1500 horsepower I'm sure you're gonna have some fun out there on the street yeah that's my goal yeah we appreciate you telling us some of the details you know is there anything we're missing uh, or anything else you want to elaborate on I think we got the basis of it you know the Holly throttle body works well this is actually an LS and we welded a piece in the front of their intake to support it uh, you know anytime you get a blow-through type application Big throttle bodies really help. They help in other applications as well, but this is where you get the biggest bang for the buck. So that was why I went with the 105. I'm using a Holley Dominator to control it, and it works well with a mechanical throttle or electron, however you want to do it. Very good. Well, Mike, appreciate you walking us through the build, and as always, we appreciate you guys for watching, and uh, thanks for tuning in to Engine of the Week. We'll see you guys next time.